Hello, it's Dimash with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk on my passion is trucks and SUVs. I'm here in Vegas getting ready to head out today and it's a snowy day in Vegas. It's really kind of crazy. But uh, yesterday I had a great time with Ram and the 2019 Ram 3500 and 2500 towing those trucks. I can't tell you towing impressions and driving impressions just yet, but what I can show you is what they've done with the chassis. So I'm going to show you, I have a cup of coffee, enjoy your cup too. Uh, I have a video of Ram's chief engineer for the heavy duties and to tell you about the chassis, the improvements they made to allow it to tow more and stop better. So those are really important uh, improvements they've done. So I kind of missed the intro a little bit, maybe a little awkward when it starts, but I'm going to go ahead and play the whole 10 minutes so you can sit there and truck nerd out and listen to all the new things they have with the new chassis and the new 2019 Ram 2500 and 3500 heavy duty. So without further ado, let's do this right now. Which is important when you're towing. 
There's also a bed lowering mode. Now what that does, that allows you to drop the vehicle about two inches, which when you're trying to hook up a trailer, that's really helpful because you don't have to take the landing gear up as high or down as far. You can raise the, trailer, the truck up under the trailer. It just minimizes the time you have to spend moving the landing gear on that. It's also nice if you're trying to move material in and out of the truck, right, just to lower it down a little bit or just simply climbing in, right? It makes that first step two inches shorter, which can be really helpful. The brakes on the new heavy duty we've gone through as well. Master cylinder, booster, pedal ratio, calipers, rotors, um, for noise improvement, performance improvement, to provide that confidence and that braking capability. But with the pedal ratio changes that we've made, it actually reduces the amount of effort on you, the driver of the vehicle. So it provides that confidence with a little bit more comfort. We've also improved the stopping distance. Primarily that was within the, core, the foundation brakes themselves. It's 360 millimeter front rotors with twin piston calipers, 358 millimeter rotors in the rear with twin piston calipers, and on the max tow application, that's a larger rear rotor of 365 millimeters. With all the, the in, with the steering as well, it's a hydraulic or circulating ball steering. It's been redesigned for better on center field, and the linkage has also been redesigned to provide premium steering characteristics regardless if you're loaded or if you're empty. With all of the changes to the suspension and the steering and the body mounts and all of the things that I've just gone through, we've been able to reduce, reduce ride harshness by 50% and improve ride comfort by 50%. So you'll notice today it's a significant improvement. Now with all, all this capability, the, the core of the capability is with the powertrain. 1,000 pound feet, 400 horse with high alpha performance. It's basically the same architecture, right? It's still a 6.7, it's still an i6, still a turbo diesel, but there were upgrades made. The core of the upgrades start with the block. It went to a compacted graphite iron block with CGI. There's three benefits to that. One, it's 75% stronger by mass. Two, it provides NVH improvements. And three, weight reduction. Also, the cylinder has been redesigned for increased strength and improve cooling. The fuel system now is a 29,000 PSI fuel system. The turbocharger has been upgraded to provide additional flow. Most of the changes there are on the compressor side of the turbocharger. Uh, the other thing that was with that was the dual core processor. So you may not think how can an engine control module be part of performance and capability. But what it allowed us to do is faster communication with the transmission and execute quick, quicker shifts and smoother shifts. Weight was also a significant um, focus with the engine as well. Um, with the block, as I mentioned earlier, that's lighter, so that was a big part of it. But also what we looked at and worked with Cummins to is all non-structural parts that were previously cast iron, we've gone to aluminum. So water inlets, water outlets, the water pump housing, and some brackets and things. And some of those are over on the table if you want to take a look at those later. But it's simple parts, but at the end it resulted in a 60 pound weight reduction within the commons. There was also, as I said, NVH, and again, the block does provide some improvements there, but we also went to hydraulic lash adjusters, so the traditional tick, tick, tick that was always there is gone. We also added a scissor gear to the front gear drive, which helped take up some of the backlash within the gears and provides quieter, uh, quieter gear noise and just overall quieter engine. Sorry, got a lot of stuff to remember here for you guys, but with all of the upgrades to the engine, the transmission had to be upgraded as well. And in the high output application, you've got the Eisen six-speed automatic, which has had hardware improvements and software improvements to, to handle the capability and support that and provide improved shifts. Um, the, the base engine, 370, 850, also benefits from all of the improvements within the high output. So all the block, all the lightweight, all the strength improvements, those are all contained within the standard output as well. And that's paired with the 68 RP transmission, which has also had hardware upgrades and software upgrades as well for improved shift quality. Uh, the base engine is the 6.4 liter V8 Hemi, uh, which this year, with the use of ATMM and ANC, we've been able to expand the fuel saver mode for increased efficiency. Um, by allowing now we can operate that zone a little wider and it's still 
from an MPA standpoint, it's, it's still very, very good. Um, the big news with the 6.4 is the all-new 8-speed transmission, which I mentioned earlier in the power wagon. And the cool part about that, there's 40 unique shift maps within the 8HB75R that adapt to whether you're towing, you're loaded, you're running hills, you're running flat land, light throttle, heavy throttle. It adapts to no matter what the scenario is that you're putting the vehicle through to provide the best efficiency, performance, and capability in that combination. We've also got new T cases for this year to be able to handle the increased input, new drive shafts, front and rear, also new axles. The front axle and the rear axles are all new. And in the max tow application, that's a complete new axle. It's a 12 inch AM axle. It's got larger bearings, four and a quarter diameter tubes, larger axle shafts, larger bolt pattern. Park rate is also increased to handle the increased capability and the tow numbers for the vehicle. So it truly is a max tow axle. Now with all that, you can see, as I mentioned earlier, the objectives that we set out to deliver in the Ram Heavy Duty. There were a lot of things that we put together to be able to accomplish those, and we've done that, and you'll see a lot of that today.